Yellow. Hey, what's up, Aaron? No, no, I'm not really doing anything. You didn't interrupt me doing absolutely nothing. What's up, man? You want to what now? You want to stream a retro-based internet show? Yeah, I can totally do it. Totally. I, I got the time, man. Yeah, just you know, give me give me some time to record the stuff and get it all set up. But yeah, totally, I can I can officially do that. I mean, I, I live and breathe retro for Lord's sakes. Yeah, totally, man. Don't even worry about it. Yeah, I'll get it to you, man. All right, bye. Yellow. Hey, what's up, Aaron? No, yeah, totally. You want the episode by next Tuesday? Yeah, totally get you by get it done by then. Oh yeah, it's all completely done. All the footage is there. Just putting the final touches on it. That's all. It's totally ready, man. Yep, I won't be late. Totally will be on time. In fact, I'm already rendering it as we speak. <laughs> all right, man. Talk to you later. Bye. What the? Release retro fun time. Son of a bitch. I just can't seem to grow up. I said I just can't seem to grow up. But you know what? What? I don't think I want to. Alright, now follow me here. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh. Time. I'm your host, Roberto Villegas, and welcome to episode one. Now, I know some of you guys out there happen to catch the live stream on the Indie Love channel, but guess what? We're going now produced. We're going to be recorded a bit, so that means higher quality, better sound, and of course, more games. Well, at least more games. Anyways, I am super excited. We're starting off with a bang and probably one of my favorite Nintendo series. Originally released for the Famicom Disk System in Japan, spawned numerous sequels and quite possibly the most messed up timeline in video game history. That's right, I'm talking about The Legend of Zelda. Do, 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 do. Man, who doesn't know The Legend of Zelda? Created by Shigeru Miyamoto and Takashi Tezuka, the game was released in 1986 as one of the launch titles for the Famicom Disk System, an external disk drive for the Nintendo Famicom. It follows the adventures of Link as he traverses around Hyrule, gathering the pieces of the Triforce of Wisdom, on an effort to defeat the evil Ganon, save the Princess Zelda. The game would go to sell over 6.5 million copies and spawn numerous sequels across all Nintendo platforms. Alright, let's just get into this game here. Uh, look at that, the Nintendo Family Computer trademark. That's proof that we're playing Famicom title. Look at that, the Hyrule Fantasy. Uh, copyright 1986 Nintendo, B in some Japanese. God, I'm not even super excited. I don't know what that B means, we'll find out later. Um, but, God, I fucking love this game. I, I adore this game more than you can ever imagine. Um, I can't remember the first time I actually played The Legend of Zelda. Um, I think it would have to be when my cousin had it. Uh, when my, my cousin, uh, JR, happened to get a Nintendo Entertainment System when, I guess he broke his leg and his mother bought it for him. Um, that'd be my aunt. Uh, and somewhere along the line, he never really gave a crap about video games in the end of it all. He just sort of played a little bit. But I would always, you know, whenever I'd go down to Texas to visit my family down there, uh, my, my aunts and uncles, I would always adore playing Zelda. Zelda is one of my favorite games. It is one of the best Nintendo games out there. And damn if Koji Kondo's soundtrack isn't awesome and, and epic. I mean, considering that, you know, granted, yes, we have an extra channel on the Famicom here. Well, and I'll explain all that very soon. But man, e even a as simple as it is, it is gloriously awesome. One of my favorite games. All right, let's get into it. Hey, wait a minute, what? Hold on a second. Huh, wait, the start's not working. 
Um, oh, crap, that's right. I gotta set the, 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 the disc side. Uh, yeah, people forgot to tell you, the fa we're playing the, since we're playing the Famicom Disk System game, you actually have to flip the disc over. Uh, and so it kind of makes it weird sort of thing. Um, and keep in mind, the you know Famicom Disk System is uh, magnetic media. It's this little disc thing, and we'll we'll explain that in a future episode, but not today. Today we're just gonna kind of ex explore stuff um, mainly because there's a lot of there's, there's a lot to talk about when it comes to the the Famicom Disk System, and and that that almost deserves its own episode. There we go. Um, man, I forgot how long load times are in this game. Now, some of you veterans out there of the classic game are probably wondering, why are there load times on this game right now? Uh, like I said, it's magnetic media. Uh, so it doesn't load as fast as a cart. It's kind of weird and strange, but, um, you know, that's, that's the curse of being on, um, on, a, on a magnetic media. Uh, the benefit of it, of course, was because of the fact that, that ROM's really expensive. This is back, remember, keep in mind, it's 1986, and even though it's Japan, memory is still pretty pricey back then. I mean, compared to now, uh, I mean, you know, at that point, you know, I think, what well, I don't even know how much a disc would have had, how much space a disc would have had. I don't even think we we had three and a quarter discs. I, I think we had the five and a quarter discs, but I don't even know if we had, um, you know, three and a quarter discs, the diskettes, as, as we called them, you know, the hard discs, however you want to, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Versus the you know, uh, big giant floppy disks. I don't know. I have to double check that. Uh, but regardless of that fact, even even if you consider the fact that those only had like three megabytes, um, that's insane in its own right. So you know, memory memory was was was, was scarce and precious. We're gonna get right now to. God, we're not going to go and uh, enter the first uh, level here, um, because we might as well start at the very beginning uh, of Zelda, uh, even if we're playing on the Famicom disc system. Oh, son of a bitch. I didn't get my ass handed to me. Here we go. Now loading. That's what probably should be there right now as a now loading screen, but I guess it just, you know, wasn't part of the spec. I can see why Nintendo would port it uh, to a cartridge um, here in the United States. Not just simply for the fact of, um, of, of technical reasons, which uh, we'll get into. Um, mainly the big technical difference between the Nintendo and the Famicom. Even though the book is exactly hardware, there, there's enough, there's certain limitations that were enough, uh, or enough differences that rendered this. Uh, I don't think American audiences, son of a bitch, there you go, first death. I don't think American audiences would have stood for the uh, disc loading time at all, uh, no matter how um, how fast it is. I don't think they would have stood for it at all, so. But I gotta say, I like the fact that the sound sounds way more awesome. Uh, I like the fact that um, we get a almost a cooler sound on like all the things that happen from the death to like all the I, I love I love the sound I, I dig it enough I dig it enough more than than I should probably so you know what's over here. Oh man, I'm talking in Japanese. Actually, I think it's just uh, Katekana that's on the, the the display, if I remember correctly. Uh, and that was even even though this is not on ROM, there's still memory limitations, and I think the text is only Katekana for that reason. Uh, I don't know. The question is, I don't know why they would include then the U.S. characters. I, I I don't I don't know why they would do it. They don't. I mean, yes, they use it in level and things like that, but maybe there just wasn't a. Maybe there isn't really a, a Japanese equivalent. There probably is, but not like a, a, as as good as it could be in um, in Katakana for words like level and life. I don't know. I've never. I've always wondered that question. It's something I've never really um, gotten straight. 
in terms of um, development and things like that. We're just gonna get the first bow here and kind of call it. So, the game, uh, I forgot the, the exact writer's name off the top of my head, but apparently, the guy who wrote this game is a huge J.R.R. Tolkien fan, and um, and let me tell you, it shows now that I now that I now that I've been introduced to that fact, it really shows in that kind of fact how how much of a Tolkien fan um, he is. I mean, just, just in the idea of like, I mean, look at Link, for example. Link is, you know, as weird as it sounds, he's a small little guy, um, but he is very much, he's very Hobbit-like. He all, he's almost as if he's going down, you know, into the depths of, of, of this exploring. I mean, it's very much a, 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 a classic hero's, hero's tale in, in, in terms of all that. I will have to definitely go to see. You know, I'll have to definitely um, when I go into analysis, I'll, I'll I'll have to check then. But I'm certain that this follows the usual tropes of, of a hero. I mean, it does follow the hero's journey pretty well. Um, you know, man, I mean, it's an adventure. Um, and I mean, originally, apparently, Miyamoto, when he was designing the game, had stated that um, he made the character young, so that way, it sort of, you know, the player. The player could could oh, god damn it could associate with him, uh, that being Link here, and, and sort of um, you know go through the coming of age, um, you know from like little boy to you know hero and things like that. And man, I gotta say, I I love that that, that I love that sort of story. I, like I said, I I think this game is is fantastic, uh, no matter what um, version you're playing. And we will, we will look at the US version in a bit after this, uh, for a dumb point, getting this level done here. Um, because, man, is it just as fun. Um, but we're playing the Family Audition just because I figured we should look back at the source of the game and, 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 and kind of learn the differences between the two. I mean, they're very similar, but there's certain interesting technical uh, issues uh, that, once again, you just, they had to change just to, because of the fact that the... Um, Famicom and the Nintendo are just that different. Um, and, and it's it's really silly things. It's things like the fact that um, there's a microphone on the on the get out of here, get, leave me alone. I want the key. There it is. No, no, you're not gonna eat me. Uh, it's a fact of the matter that the Famicom has uh, on the, on its second controller port has a wired microphone. There we go. Uh, and, you know, things like Pole's voice, this enemy that you, you apparently could silence with a microphone. Um, and it was totally, totally different. Like, completely different. And it was weird, because even the, even the, man, the, the, man, the Nintendo manuals have it. These load times. All right, we are done playing the U.S. version. We're done. We're going to be take a break playing the the Japanese version here, and actually come back uh, and play the U.S. version. So when we come back, we're going to tackle the Nintendo version of Legend of Zelda, not Hyrule Fantasy, the actual Legend of Zelda. Uh, and in between the break, why don't you guys watch this video here explaining the differences between the Nintendo Entertainment System and the Famicom, and why it is we kept hearing a lot of those weird sounds. Gray and black, or red and white. Nintendo sure knew how to make an 8-bit system. With a 6502 processor, 32 kilobytes of ROM space, and 2 kilobytes of RAM, both systems showed the world the power of 8-bit games and even revitalized the home console market in the U.S. In the end, both are powerful systems for their time. There are some major differences between the two systems. For instance, the Nintendo Famicom allowed for developers to pipe audio through the system. 
This allowed for game developers, such as Konami and Sunsoft, to develop custom chips with better sound, allowing for more complex music than the Famicom could perform natively. Another major difference was the cartridge design and production. Besides the pin layout differences between the two systems, in Japan, companies could make their own ROM carts. Not only did this lead to carts of different colors, but it also led to a large amount of pirate or sub-quality games to enter the Japanese market. In order to combat this, games in the U.S. could only be manufactured by Nintendo. This is not the complete story, and trust me, there is plenty to talk about when it concerns both systems. But I wanted to give an overview and make clear that though both systems are essentially the same hardware, the Famicom and the Nintendo Entertainment System are drastically different in design and implementation. But if they are pretty much the same hardware... Why were they so different in execution, implementation, and design? We'll cover this in a future episode. Hello, okay, we're back. Uh, and I figure since we've already looked at the first level of that, it's time we look uh, at the Nintendo version. And since I don't, I haven't really, I'm not gonna give you guys the exact same stuff, I figure why don't I show you a cool little trick. Um, in the original Zelda game, there's actually a second quest. Usually you get it when you unlock the first one. But there's a way you can get it and play it right off the bat. First and foremost, start a new file and name your character Zelda. And we go, oh wait, not like that. We gotta go like this. Register. And if you notice, I have the Master Sword. I have three life, three hearts. Actually, I don't have the Master Sword. I have a wooden sword. Danger to go alone. Take this. Very famous quote. Now, in the second quest, everything is different. Or slightly different, I should say. Should be different. Like, this doesn't seem... Well, maybe not. Maybe, maybe just the dungeons are different. I forget what's different. Uh, as you notice, for example, right now we're hearing some, you know, audio differences. I thought it was different. I guess I was wrong. I thought I was just typing in Zelda. Maybe I was wrong. I'll have to double check that again. And <coughs> As you can see, a lot of this is very similar to the Famicom Disk System version, except everything loads a little bit faster. Uh, that is, of course, because we are not on magnetic media right now. We're actually on a ROM. Um, and because of that, uh, the cartridge loads faster. It's just, you know, it's, it's a fact of the matter that you're not reading off of magnetic media. You're kind of loading it time things like that so you know it makes some sense so let's go to the cat let's go to the dungeon here oh look at this it is different uh, we are playing the second quest officially so all the dungeons are different that's right so you notice there's there used to be a wall there so let's um let's explore this second quest Ooh, a lot harder enemies too a lot harder enemies just a lot more of them you know, normally we had the bats here. Now we got the um, goblins, or I forget their official name. That's the, another, another strange thing, uh, that the fact you can tell it's very Tolkien, uh, is the fact that a lot of the, um, the names of characters, uh, even in the, uh, even in... Jesus, I can't believe I found this like that. I should not have been able to find it. I was... I just got lucky there. Um, even like, like, like these are called uh, keys, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the bats. Um, they're not even called bats. I, I don't know, and I, I don't know if that's, that's just because the world of Hyrule is different from ours, which I'd imagine it is, of course. Um, but I think it's mainly because of the fact that um, you know, they're making a fantasy game, and, and, and they want, and, and, they, and they, they don't just want, like, oh, look, it's a bat, or whatever, you know, you don't have, you know, in a, in a Tolkien universe, you don't have just bats, you've got, you know, talking trees, and giant dragons, and, whoa, Jesus, I gotta go, wow, this is, I don't have a key at all, can I kill these things? Okay, no, I can't, so I gotta go down. Wow, this is totally different. This is like insanely different. Um, and I'm actually kind of proud that I remembered the second quest thing. Um, but yeah, so I can imagine that that's, you know, that's gotta be the reasoning behind the writers uh, 
for putting the weird names, just because it's it sounds way more awesome to, to no, not to kill a spider, but to kill a tektite. Or it just sounds so more awesome to, to kill, you know, Pole's voice as opposed to a, a bunny rabbit or something. Son of a Now notice the death now notice the death. That actually was um that came through the through a different channel. I didn't even bother I mean they didn't come to a different channel. It, it wasn't it wasn't like our synth sound. Uh and as our break mentioned, uh, that's because of the fact that Famicom has uh the ability to route channels. Now for those who are very intrepid and want to actually and happen to get themselves a Famicom disc system for some reason. Um, God damn it. There is a way to actually get the Nintendo to do it. I was actually reading recently on this hack that essentially lets you route the sound. Uh, it requires you to actually get, of course, a 72-pin to 60-pin converter. Uh, you probably already have one if you are playing Famicom games on your Nintendo. Um, you also need... Um, I kind of need to actually bust over your Nintendo, so I'd recommend if you if you don't have a Nintendo right now, um, you know, don't, if you have just one Nintendo, don't, don't, you know, burn your one system. Uh, maybe, maybe go buy your local used game store, or if you want to support one of my favorite businesses, you can go, of course, to GameOverGames.com. That is not a sponsorship, they're not paying for this, sadly. Uh, but maybe I should talk with them. In any case, uh, once you have done that, apparently you can just, uh, you know, kind of jerry, uh, not, not, like, set up some wires and do some fun things. Um, I'm really, I realize I'm just, I'm, I'm only, like, roughly talking about this thing. Because, um, it's, it's actually a very hard hack. It, it actually is not, it's not that easy. It's not like an easy mod. It actually requires a lot of, um, it requires some soldering. So we're going to try to beat level one on the second quest. If we don't, then we've at least uh, tackled it before, and I, I, feel, I feel good. I bet you there's some, uh, there's some hidden stuff right here. I bet you there's something hidden. I mean, uh, when all else fails, bomb every wall. That's, that's the Zelda rule. Bomb everything you can. Why? Because. Wow. This is going up. This guy. Mother effer. All right, we got five more minutes. Okay, the second quest is really hard, <laughs> as it should be, because technically when you're supposed to play this, is after beating the game. And though, yes, I have beaten The Legend of Zelda, it's been a long while since I've played Legend of Zelda. Uh, it's still a great game, I just haven't played this one in a while from, from, from now, so, you know, sue me. Right. Go again. Break time's over. Yes, that is my Ruby Rod impression. At least it saved the state there. I 
just wish I could get knocked back still. I think I only get knocked back when I'm full heart, which is kind of terrible. All right, last try. All right, we'll try one more time. That was that was a new. That was a that was a false. That was just me being terrible. Um. Well, let's actually let's go down that other pathway since let's let's. Arr, I want that map though. I think these guys come. I have a feeling they're gonna drop something. They drop the heart. Bombs, great. Exactly what I didn't need. But what I might need here. Or not. Well, that's nice of them. Huh. Maybe I need one here? Fun. Let's go down this pipeline. AKA door. Oh no. No, not you. That's right, I gotta kill your bombs. Just just barely enough bombs. Mother. Pus bucket. Don't tell me. Come on. Bat, fly down. Uh, key. Come on, key. Key, get down here. That is an E shape, by the way. I'm starting, I'm seeing that right now. Uh, it just occurred to me, I don't have a key anymore. And I can't go any more forward. And I know if I go over there, I need a key to get in. Maybe there's a key over here? No, just at that area. Huh. Well, that's... Good. Maybe these guys will still give a key. We're gonna find, all right, we're gonna go a little extended. We're gonna try one more time, we're gonna try one more time. Cause we're gonna beat this one, I think we got it in the bag. Be a long first episode, how about that? Forget it. Never mind. I'm too late. Sorry, guys. Well, that's really all the time we have for the gameplay, but don't worry. Uh, we'll, we're going to come right back. Uh, we're going to actually talk about a little bit of this whole game and kind of sum up everything we just saw in a very, very fun package and actually learn a lot more about the actual mythos of Legend of Zelda. So what's there to say that hasn't been said in Legend of Zelda? It's a great game showing how simple game mechanic can push along a fun time. What I find really interesting is the fact that a little game like this inspired the entire series. Consider the following. It's 1986. Nintendo is releasing a new way of playing games, the Famicom Disk System. Now, though it's in Japan, kids are the same for the most part. At that age, we all want to be the hero. So here comes the Hyrule Fantasy, a game where you play as, essentially, a kid. And it's your job to save the land from the evil Ganon. What kid wouldn't want to play this game? 
The game itself is a great example of the power of simple storytelling. Just opening with a cave in front of Link invokes a player with the need to explore, thereby pushing the story of saving Hyrule very simply. There's no tutorial mission, no giant cutscene, just a man offering a basic sword to defend a player against the forces of evil in this fantasy world. By getting the story back to basics, it also helps with the learning curve and allows the player to get quickly invested and engaged in the game. It's a great game that captures a player's imagination and wonder. The Legend of Zelda is an excellent game and a great piece of art. And the players agreed. So much so that in less than a year, Nintendo would release a sequel on the Famicom Disk System. In the next episode, we'll look at that sequel and see how it stands in the series. Thanks for watching the show. Of course, you can catch all future episodes right here at youtube.com slash Cosmic Radio TV. Just click on that big old subscribe button. And of course, join our discussion at our website, CosmicRadio.tv slash RetroFunTime. If you happen to like what we're doing, let us know over Twitter. Hit us up at Cosmic Radio TV. And join us Wednesday nights on twitch.tv slash IndieLove for a live stream of the episode and a post-episode discussion by yours truly. It's a fun time had by all. I'm Roberto Villegas reminding you that it's not art unless we prove it to be. Take care.